Hello there. So are you looking forward to learn how to detect, track, and count objects using artificial intelligence? Worry no more because you are in the right place. In this very tutorial, we'll begin from scratch how to detect drinks moving on conveyor belt, and then after detection, we'll track these drinks and also count them. So the fun part of this is that we'll start from scratch and you also get access to the code so that you can modify or you can build up on it, use it as your base starting point. So if you are glad about this, follow me through this tutorial and I promise you I'll definitely go to learn something new. Let's get right into it. Alright guys, so before we get started, I want to say a very big thank you for you all for supporting my works, most especially for liking and sharing my content. But if you are new here, kindly subscribe and put me on post notifications so that you don't miss any of my upcoming tutorials. So let's kick off by looking at the files we'll be using today in this tutorial. So here are the files we'll be using. I have two videos here, bot.mp4 and bot.bot1.mp4. Bot then we have our Python file which we'll be writing, which is py.file. So we are currently in that file which is empty now. Then we have classes.txt, so we we'll use this classes file, and this classes file is based on the Coco dataset. So we are going to detect the bottle in here, and also the other file we have here is the sort.py file, which we'll be using for tracking and counting these bottles. Then we have the two YOLO models, YOLO v8 the large model and the nano model so the nano model have more speed but the accuracy is not that good the large one is having a better accuracy but you will lose speed so we we'll test both models and see which one performs better for our installation part i'll just put the requirement.txt file on my github repo including all the code and the files we'll be using so that you guys can download and just install all the requirements because if we say we'll install all of them just now it will take some time so i'll just put the file in there so that you guys will just install them with the particular version we are using okay so the next thing i'll do here now is to import the libraries we'll be using and then i'll talk about each library what you are going to use it for Alright guys, so these are the libraries we'll be using. The first library here is the OPCV library and we'll be using this to, re to read in our video feed and to apply some processing to our video feed. So everything that has to do with video, visualization and all those stuff will be handled by the OPCV library. Then we have CV zone here which we we'll use to put some text on our screen and some rectangles as well. We have NumPy here, we also use it for some mathematical analysis. Then we have the math module here, we use it to do certain conversions. Then we have YOLO, so the YOLO is what we use to perform the object detection. Then from sort, we are importing everything and we use the sort library to track these bottles and based on their tracking, we will count them. So these are the libraries we are going to be using. Along the line, if we need any extra library, we will come back and import them. So with this out of the way, the next step here is to load in our video file. So I'll quickly load in this video file and make sure I explain each line of code to you guys. Alright guys, so this is the bare minimum code we need to read in our video file. So the first one here we are just creating a video capture object so we say cap is equal to cv to the video capture and in here all you have to specify is the path to your video file so we have a video here bot.mp4 and i'm just specifying the path here because it's in the same directory we are working then since it's a video file we are taking each frame at each second so we have to take it in a loop so we say while one we are getting our video file which is cap.read this also return the red here we are putting it in the red variable it doesn't matter the variable we specify here it returns the 
presence or absence of video so in case there is a video file it will return one when there is no video file it will return zero so it's a boolean value then after receiving this our video we went ahead and show it using the IM show function then we specify our video and the frame the name of the frame we want to show it on so we just give it frame then we have to wait and take each frame each second so we use the wait key and we pass in key one here so that we take each frame each second so this all you can go ahead and run this app and test it all right guys so you can see perfectly we are loading our video file in and everything is moving so this is the video we are going to be using we we'll also test the second video as well so you can see it's working and we are out of frames and we got an error so everything went off but the thing is we want to keep this video repeating so how do we do that so what we can do is that we can repeat this by writing if not read then what we'll go ahead and do is to reread our video capture here and simply we'll type continue and for this it will repeat over and over and over so this red here i told you earlier is a boolean value returns one when there is a video file and returns zero so we are saying in absence of a video feed if it's zero then we have to go ahead and read our video file and continue the whole process by so doing it will repeat playing this video over and over and over so let's test it out And now it will just keep repeating this video it will never end until we close it ourselves so you can see it's playing over and over and over so we can test the other video too we can just bought one which is here to see how it looks okay and this is the next video file so you can see it's also running just as the previous one and it is also not going to end because we are repeating it all right guys so now we are done with reading in our video file and the next step here is to perform object detection on this video file so for that we utilize the yolo model so we'll come down here and say okay our model is equal to yolo then in here we specify the type of model we want to use so we have both the nando and the large here so i'll just put in the large so that we get better accuracy so for that i just type the exact name yolo v8 large dot pt and this is all we have to do so if you want to use the nando you just change l here to n and that will work fine for you so if they are first time running this uh, file it will just go ahead and download this file in the same directory you are working so don't think about where you are going to get this yolo file when you run it it will download so you need an active internet connection before you run it or you can go ahead and down, download mine on my github repo and you will use the same model i've downloaded okay so we'll come in our loop here and now We'll put our video into our yellow model so that it will do some detections on it for us. So for that to return us some results, so put it in a result variable and this is equal to our model. Then in here we pass in our video and we pass in an argument called stream is equal to true. So instead of true, you can also put it to one, and that's all. So with this, you can detect. The bottles in our video but guess what we need some essential details from this result so an example of such details will be our bounding box information our class the particular class of object detected and also we need the confidence value of this class so for that we need to iterate over this result a number of times so that we we'll get this info so we can just write that for our info in results our parameters that we need is equal to our info dot boxes then we can finally treat over these parameters and get our bounding box confidence in the class detect 
so we can also see for our box now let's do a details for our details in parameters we want to go ahead and get the values the boundary box coordinates so for that we'll go s1 y1 s2 y2 and this is equal to our details dot x y x y and we are taking this at the first index so that's how we can take the bounding box information the next thing we we'll take is our confidence so for that we'll store that in a variable called conf and this is also equal to our details dot co that's conf so i think we can change this variable name. okay it will still work so let's then we are taking this at the first index then finally what we can take also is our class detected so we can see our class underscore detect is also equal to cls at the first index so it will be details.cls details.class detect okay so this is how easy we can get our information from our results here so now we have our bounding box we have our confidence and we also have our class detail but guess what these values we receive here are going to be float values so we have to convert them to integer so that we can use them so we'll go ahead and convert our bounding box info to integer then we'll use it to draw bounding box on the bottles so for that we will just repeat the same x1 x2 and so on and we'll convert it to integer so i'll bring it down here paste it and we'll say this is equal to integer of whatever x1 is and we'll do same for the rest of them okay so we have converted them to integer successfully what we can do here is to draw circle or bounding as a circle why bad we can draw a bounding box around these bottles detected so you can say cv 2 dot rectangle and then we we'll put this rectangle on our video then we we'll specify the first point for this rectangle which is x1 and y1 the next point will be x2 y2 then we have to choose the color for this rectangle so let's do it two five five 0255 that should be pink also then the thickness of this bounding box you can put it at five and you know what let's test this out we've written a lot of code to see how it works all right so this is working you can see we are detecting the bottles and we are having some false detection here as well but we'll get rid of this based on the confidence so let's go ahead and do that and let me test this on the first video as well so that's bot let's get rid of one here that's bot as well let me hide this so that you can see and let me run this one more time and still is detecting this the rotating shaft here as a bottle i don't know why but we can get rid because the confidence will be for sure very low so now let's go ahead and do our detection or draw our bounding box based on the confidence so well, we have the confidence value here but we have to convert it so what we'll do is that we'll say still our confidence value is equal to we can use the math.seal here and we'll give it our confidence value and then we can say we'll multiply this by 100 so that we get our confidence in percentage so whatever we get it will be in percentage then if that is the case we'll come down here and say okay if our confidence is greater than 50 percent or let's do it 60 percent if greater than 60 percent then go ahead and draw our rectangle for us so let's run this up and i'm sure by now the false detection will be gone Wow, so you can see it's not detecting the shaft again. Okay, we have some false detection again, so we can increase the confidence in order to get rid of this. 
so let, let's increase their confidence and still check let's make it 70 percent okay so it's detecting nicely but now we don't know what we are detecting for us we know it's a bottle but let's see what the model thinks of what is detecting so for that we have to read in the classes file so let me close this we have to read in this classes file classes.txt file into our python script then we'll map it to the class detect here so we'll read it and map it to the class detect here so that we'll know is truly detecting a bottle or not so to read that file in we'll come down here with some space and we'll read it into a variable name class class names so let's equate it to a list an empty list of course then to read the file in python you do with open then the name of the file so our name is classes.txt uh, we want to read it so put out the read mode i want to read it as f so our class names here will be equal to f.read and that's all or we can also put each of them on a different line so we can specify split lines here right so that everything will be on a new line and we can test this by printing class names at the first index to see whether we we'll get person so the first one here is person so if we get person then everything is working correctly I'll run this so i don't need this all i need is up here let me go see whether i'll get person so yes you can see we have person here that means we are doing the right thing okay so now that we are getting person here we can come and map it here what is it class detect we can come and map it to class detect but first let's convert class detect to integer class detect is equal to integer value of class detect and now we can say our class detect is equal to class names of class detect so class detect will give you integer from 0 to 82 because it's based on this class.txt so we are just mapping if we get 0 that means it's a person if we get bicycle that means it's, it's 1 so whatever we are getting in this class detect we are mapping it to the string representation of whatever is in classes.txt so that's what we are doing and to prove that we can also use cv zone to put the name of whatever is being detected on it so we can say cv zone dot put text red i want to put it on our video and then what we want to put is f string of whatever class detect is the position we want to put it in the list um, we want to put it x1 we want it to be at the top so x1 we can subtract some value from x1 or we can add let's add it to x1 then y1 let's subtract 12 from it so that will be at the top so i've tested this with some values and i've seen this works fine the scale we are going to make it two and bring this down so let's specify a scale of two and also the thickness of two you can make border two as well to make it look nice border of two and we'll run this up now so here it is you can see we are having bottle on it so bottle is being detected so for now we know whatever class we are detecting which is class bottle so this looks nice so now i think we are done with the detection one more thing instead of using um cv2 rectangle we can okay let's let's leave this for now we will change it when we are doing the tracker we use cv zone package to draw the rectangle which makes it look nicer than the cv2 rectangle okay so this is 
object detection done now we move to object tracking and for object tracking we are going to use the sort library as i told you earlier so what we'll do down here is to declare a tracker object so we'll call this tracker and this is equal to our sort library so we can give this max age of 20 and then we we'll also specify the minimum hints which is equal to 3 by default so we we'll just leave it like that so this is how we can initialize our tracker object with this one line of code so this tracker accepts some values and then based on these values it will return to you the bounding box info and the id of a particular or every bottle detected in the frame so the values that this tracker accepts is our bounding box information the x1 y1 x2 y2 and also takes in the detection confidence then based on this it will analyze the current frame based on the previous frame and then give each bottle an id and keep track of that id so what we'll do here is to come and declare an empty numpy array which we'll call detections and this detections is equal to mp.empty and we'll specify a range of 0 to 5 then we'll come down here and we'll say okay so i think we can comment this for now and we'll come down and we'll say okay our current detection our current detection is equal to mp.array and in this array we are going to pass our bounding box information so we have it here i'll just copy it and put it in this array and also we have to add the confidence because that's what our tracker accepts and what we'll do is that it will put this in our detections and stack it vertically for our tracker so our detections now is equal to mp dot vertical stack and in here we'll put our current detection and the detection value we've initialized at the top so we we'll put our detection and our current detection okay so this is the value here so this is the value we are going to send to our tracker and based on this value our tracker will give us the same points of the bottle and also in addition it will give us the id which is important to us in this case so we'll come here and we'll say our tracker dot update and we'll just pass in our detections and that's all so this also returns some results to us so we store it in results and this result is equal to whatever we are getting then what we have to do is to loop over these results and then we'll get our bounding box info and the id so we can say for info in our results we want to get our bounding box information so i can copy this and put it here then the last thing it will also give us is the id and this is equal to our info then what we can also do is to convert these values back to integer just as we did here so you just copy this and paste it once again and the id as well so the id must also be an integer because it's default float so we do int of id and that's all so now we can use these values to draw the rectangle on our object detected in this case is bottle so we'll come and copy this same code here paste it down here we'll uncomment it nicely 
and then we have the same values then instead of class the 30 here we'll replace it with the id and see whether the id we are getting is unique for each and every object we are detecting so we let's run this app so guys you can see we have id for each bottle so this is associated with id 1 this is id 4 and this is working nicely so this is what we want we are the right direction we are getting id for each bottle so based on this id now we are going to count so to count we need to have a line at the end here so where are the where the curves are here so that when this bottle crosses that line we know um it has passed so we have to count but how do we know the bottle have crossed that line okay the thing is we have to find the middle point of this bottle and then we we'll put a circle there so when we find that point we we'll put a circle there so whenever this circle crosses the line we have we, we, will, be, we will be drawing here then we know this bottle have passed so we have to draw so that's all we have to implement that's the algorithm we have to implement in order to count i'll close this off now and the first thing is to draw the line so for the line we'll come at the top and we'll put the line here so let me space up so let's declare line which is equal to list and i've check for this value so i'll just point them in so thousand one hundred zero thousand one hundred and nine hundred because we want it at the latter end and what we'll do now is to draw this line So right after our tracker dot update, we can draw this line so we can say cv2 dot line, and we have to give it our video. Then we have to give it the first point, which is line at in the zero, and line at in this one. Then the next point will be probably you know line at in this two and three. give the color of this line so let's make it yellow since we have some mistake with the bounding box okay we need to close this off here then we'll get rid of one of the parentheses not bounding box then we'll put the color value in here so let's make this 00 255 and 255 and I guess that will be yellow and the thickness of this line will be 5 so let's test this out wow guys and our line is nicely drawn so we have the yellow line here so what we'll do next is to find the middle of this bottle and put a circle there so when this circle crosses this line we'll change the color of the line to red and also implement our counting so i'll close this up and to find the middle of this bottle is also quite very easy we just have to do some calculations on our x1 s2 and then so we just have to find the width height which is equal to x2 we are subtracting x1 from x2 and also we are subtracting y1 from y2 then after getting width and height we have to find our center x and our center y but center y and this is equal to x1 plus our width divided by 2 then to get a cy is the same thing instead of x1 y1 plus our width also plus our height rather my bad also divided by 2 Okay, y1 not y so this is the center point of the bottle and we will confirm this by drawing a circle there so cv2 dot circle
put this circle on our video and then the point for this circle is C, X and C, Y. The radius of this circle want it to be 6 and the color let's make this um, let's put 255 0 255 it should be pink I think then the thickness this we want it to be filled the circle to be filled on the middle of the bottle and we can run this up to see so you can see we have okay so the circle is not at the middle that means we did some error it's at the top we have we have made some mistakes somewhere in calculating the middle so let's check it out so see it's x1 plus width divided by 2 then y1 plus height this should be height i've written y1 plus y1 that should be it and before we run this we can change the cv2 dot rectangle we can use cv zone rectangle to make this nice so we can write cv zone dot corner red and in here we have to put this on our video and then we give it the points on which we want to put this rectangle so we give it our x1 our y1 then our width and height and remember we have found the width and height at the top here then the corner thickness we'll do it, which is rt we'll do it equal to 5 and what we can do is to get rid of our cv2 rectangle here so let's run this up now so guys this is working you can see we have i think the circle is not big enough for visualization sake we can increase this to 12 twice the size so that we make it very big Alright, so you can see the circle in the middle of the bounding box. So each detected bounding box have a circle at the middle now. So to count anytime this circle hits our yellow line here, we know it's going out of the frame, then we'll increment our counter. So that's the algorithm we use. So now let's see how we can do that. I'll clear this off now and I'll come down here to implement that. But before that, we can also say our counter is equal to an empty list. And we'll come here to check whether or not our circle is in. So we can say if our line at in this one, which is the y axis, is less than our center y and also less than our line at index 3 which is also the y and the down as is if this is the case we have checked for the y as is so we have to go ahead and check for the s as is as well so we can also say in our line is also less than our circle at the center x and also less than our line at index 2 so here should be index 2 for x at index 2 so if it is the case we we'll go ahead and count so in order to verify whether the circle is hitting our line we can redraw the same line with a different color so anytime our circle hits the line we'll change this color to red and then we increase the thickness to 10 so anytime this condition occurs we just change the color of our line and guess what because this is a thin line we can also give some threshold here we we'll subtract 10 from here and also add 10 to the end here so that we create a box there 
in which when this bottle enters into that box or into that area we know it's passing so we add 10 to the end as well so let's run this up and check okay so anytime this bounding box hits the line we expect the color of the line to change so you can see it has changed because the bottle has passed there let's check for the second bottle or the third one i think it has changed once again so this is working so now that we know we are on the right track let's go ahead and implement our counting now close this up or we can also check this on the next video file which is the one here I'll go at the top and change it to one and let's check how it is how it will perform on this video file as well okay so boom and it's working it hit the line it has changed color let's see boom and it's working so it's working great on both video files now what we'll go ahead and do is to count if I now change to the previous video file and we'll count so to count we have to check whether there is any bottle with the same ID in our counter list remember we declared a counter list at the top so we can say if our counter our counter what am I spelling counter dot count that means we are counting everything in our counter and what we are counting is the ID is equal to zero. If the ID is, is equal to zero, then we we'll go ahead and append. So we can say okay, counter dot append, and we we'll append whatever ID we are getting. So if it's zero, we append a new ID. Then what we will do is to find the length of this counter. Then we we'll know the total number of drinks that have passed. So for that, we will have to draw. And put the total number of drinks that have passed on our screen so we also use cvzone library to draw so cvzone dot put text and want to put this text on our video and the text we want to put this f string of our total drink so we call it total drinks So total drinks is equal to we want to find the length of our bounding box. We want to find the length of our counter. And then after this, we want to place it right at the top of our screen. So I've checked this and the position is 500 by 34. 'll bring this down and we'll specify our thickness values again so thickness of four scale as well 2.3 you can change these values and you will get whatever is suitable in your use case let's give it a little bit of border to make this look nice okay so with this we are done let me check what we can do okay so i think we can even not put the id on it now because it's not needed once our accounting is implemented nicely we don't need the id so let me run this up and uh, see okay so this running okay the first bottle have passed and we have the total number of drinks to be one this has also passed and it has incremented to two so guys this works and i'm much glad about it this is working nice if you can remove the circle too as well because we don't need it anymore all we care is our counting algorithm is working nicely our detection algorithm is working nicely so this is working nicely and big thanks to ultralytics for making this possible they are doing all the heavy lifting work at the back end and with only few lines of code we can achieve something great like this guys i'm much impressed I'm much impressed we got four you can test this on the other video file as well 
so um, for that we have to remove the circle where we're drawing it right here you can remove the circle too as well in your use case if you think it should be there you can keep it that would be nice and let's test this on the next video file but one and put one here so i'll run this up okay so let's see it has counted one we have some fluctuations here at the down we can increment our confidence value to maybe get rid of it i'm sure if you make it 80 percent it will work nicely so we've counted two let's see counted three and guys this is just working working great absolutely great this is working great so guys uh, this will bring the tutorial to an end i remember all the files codes and everything will be on my github repo and the link to it will be in the description so you can leverage this and um also let me have your opinion on how well we can improve this what we can use this and how do you think we should we should do something about it or something like that and i request one favor finally from you watching if you have learned something you can be why not share it with one of your one or two of your friends to also watch and learn something new by so doing you help the channel grow as well so thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next tutorial